Good morning to you all. Um, it is a pleasure to be part of this great community of innovators who are doing great things. Um, and I am here representing Africa. Woo -woo. <laughs> and I just want to begin by saying Africa has the answers, and I think Saku alluded to this, that um, we need to toss aside for a moment our traditional understanding of the developed helping the developing, our linear grasp of what success looks like, and take the view that whether we are developed or developing, north or south, first or third, when it comes to the field of education, we're on an evil, we're in an even playing field when it comes to dismantling old systems that are no longer serving us. Robert Quinn, who is an author and professor at the University of Michigan, says, traditional learning is learning that is linked with the past. It is learning something that someone already knows. Traveling naked into the land of uncertainty allows for another kind of learning, a learning that helps us to forget what we know and discover what we need. In light of this quote from an African perspective on education, we have already been stunted through the roots of colonialism which have forced us to learn something that someone else already knows. We need to look deeply into our present context in a way that learning helps us to forget what we know is not working and discover what we need that will work for what is ahead. Perhaps there's room to maneuver within the bounds of what you originally thought development should look like. And perhaps the developed can learn from the developing and vice versa. This is not, of course, to be ignorant of the sometimes obvious gaps that we have in finance, in infrastructure, in stability, etc. But rather to be aware that more does not always mean better. More comes with problems of its own. In the African education sphere, the onslaught of what we are seeing seems so immense, almost impossible to overcome. However, the greater the problem, the greater the solution. Deep and diverse need requires deep and diverse innovation. Overcoming in the face of possibility brings the answers that we need. So let's look at our African answer. But first, what is the big problem? Imagine the impact of this young girl who you're seeing on the screen, let's call her Nomsa, believing that she is loved and that her life has purpose and equal value to you and me. The big problem is that more than half of young people in sub-Saharan Africa are being born into poverty, they're growing up in communities where there is visibly no hope and there are no role models or mentors. If this problem is not solved, there are going to be three major resulting consequences. The first is unemployment and youth unemployability. In South Africa, unemployment currently stands at 48%, with young people like Nom Sohuiso having very little prospect for meaningful work. The second major consequence is unbroken cycles of poverty and youth unrest. Right now, over 40% of the population in sub-Saharan Africa is younger than 15 years old. We have the opportunity, therefore, to create a youth dividend which will accelerate economic growth. But if we fail to do so, Africa will face an unprecedented youth burden, exacerbating unemployment, social unrest, and a dependency on government handouts. The third major consequence, if we don't solve this problem, is endemic youth risk behavior, which leads to an unsustainable health and education burden. Most young people in this region not only live daily with economic uncertainty, but they're facing huge peer pressure to indulge in taking substances, engaging in risky relationships, which cause them to get teenage pregnancies, dropping out of school, joining a gang for acceptance, or having sex for money to put food on the table for their families. 58% of teenagers in sub-Saharan Africa are not at high school, 58%. 62% of children in South Africa do not have biological fathers in their lives. If we are to unlock the social and economic potential of the next generation, then our solution must address the root issues that drive the system of how young people are brought up and educated. We have to change the narrative around the youth bulge crisis at the bottom of the pyramid, to see youth as the very hope for the African continent, 
We must do what it takes for many like Nomsa to be brought to become national builders that they were born to be. Now, as a senior leader in an organization called Gold Youth Development Agency, I have seen how even in the midst of the most devastating circumstances, there is hope for change. I am here today because I am a product of people who have invested in the next generation. And our experience shows us that people don't change with information alone, but they also change when others around them change. So personal change leads to group change, which leads to community change. This is our key to quality education. More important than plowing energy into academics alone, we look at the whole person. A recent McKinsey study collected data across varied socioeconomic groups around the world. The consistent finding was that student mindsets, such as motivation, self-belief, have greater impact on student performance than any other factor, and they actually have doubled the effect of socioeconomic background. So through a replicable and evidence-based model of peer education, over 15 years, Gold Youth has reached 71,000 young people in four African countries. We're transforming the role of young people from being passive recipients of negative norms to proactive social and economic agents who empower themselves and their peers to become the ethical leaders of tomorrow. We're creating a movement to embed long-term peer role models into mentors, into all schools and communities, supported by rigorous curricula and processes measuring concrete improvements in social mindset and behavior change, improved educational outcomes, and job creation. And we're supporting micro-economies to flourish by piloting scalable business-in-a-box solutions from hydroponics to clean energy and financial inclusion that sell to the poor, employ the poor, and empower the poor. The gold solution creates employment between the ages of 18 and 26, who are developed as facilitator interns to in turn train and mentor teenage peer educators. Through these four-year relationships, peer educators are taught to model positive decision-making, strengthen their academic work, and maximize their impact on their peers and their communities. So teachers, parents, community leaders, and business are supported to create an enabling environment. The alumni are part of the Gold Grads community for life, connected to opportunities in further education, internships, jobs, and micro-businesses. We have an audacious goal, which is to develop 10 million young leaders by 2030 as the critical catalysts who will bring about wider systemic change ground up. And to see real quality education bring change, we're addressing root causes of social problems, which are embedded in networks of cause and effect. We are working an intentional process designed to fundamentally alter structures that cause the system to behave in a certain way. So now, when you are involved in the system of youth upbringing and education in the African context, there is no option but to believe the impossible. Things will go wrong according to what you think is wrong, but every action has an impact. We have seen youth from the toughest communities overcoming themselves. Fighting mindset that convinced them that they amount to nothing, they will never succeed, they will never lead. We have seen young people overcoming circumstances. They have fought through injustice. They allowed adversity to shape them and not to break them. We have seen youth overcome their environments. They have fought peer pressure, and they are choosing integrity, character, community, and beginning to choose life. There are so many stories that I can share about stories of change that we have seen among the young people that we work with. And because of time, I cannot show you a video, but if you go on our profile on 100.org, you will see beautiful stories of young people in our communities who have been changed, who have hope, and who have been changed because they had people believe in them and invested in them as the future generations. Thank you.